Hello once again, this is Bo, and want to say thanks for clicking on ZSportsLounge.com and the affiliates that keep shoot, shooting our channel out, the military bases that send text messages, emails from all over this globe. We have a chance to talk about a Phoenix story out of Old Dominion. He is none other than head football coach Bobby Wilder. Sir, thank you. You're welcome, Bo. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Coach, before we jump into what everybody wants to talk about, your incredible win at Jacksonville, last second heroics, there are other stories involved in this in this program. When we say rise from the Phoenix, there's a lot of programs in this country that closed out from the 60s to the 80s because of finances. Many of those schools never opened up the football. They've regretted it every moment. You talk to the athletic directors and even the alumni. It was a decision that they shouldn't have made, and they made it anyways. You're in a board to create the success from the ground up. And, you know, Coach, I'm willing to bet there are some surprises along the way that <laughs> scared you to death in the middle of the night waking up in a panic. Oh, there's no question there's a couple of them, Bo. This thing goes back to when I got hired February 13th, 2007, and when I had researched this job, done the interview process, I knew Old Dominion was serious about starting football. Number one, they had planned to build a $17 million practice facility that I'm in right now talking to you that's got all our offices, a half a million dollar video system, 120 seat team meeting room, 6,000 square foot weight room, 3,000 square foot tra uh, training room, locker room for 100 players, two practice fields that have uh, AstroTurf game day, 3D grass with lights, all of that just for the practice facility. And then they had an existing stadium, Foreman Field, because they played football at Old Dominion from 1930 to 1940. They kept it going all the way up until 1989 with bringing in other teams. They called it the Oyster Bowl, uh, <laughs> where, where famous players like Roger Staubach and Bo Pelini and Ernie Davis played here. Then they had the Norfolk Neptunes that played here. Uh, high school games were played here. So Foreman Field, a 20,000-seat stadium, was always in operation. But what they did when they made the decision to start football is they did a $25 million renovation on Foreman Field. And I can tell you, Bo, because I've traveled all over the country coaching in 1AA football. I've seen Montana. I've seen Appalachian State. I've seen Delaware. Our facility stacks up with anybody. And our first two games have been sold out. We've had 20,000. Uh, they sold 15,000 season tickets and actually had to turn a couple thousand people away because of the interest level in this program. And that was the starting point, Bo. And then what happened when I first got hired Everything had to be done. I mean, we didn't have pens, paper, and notepad. I had to order that first. And then <laughs> hiring the staff, all the recruiting, uh, practicing for a year, everything that had to be done. Anybody who's ever started a business knows you start from the ground up and you have to do everything. But because of the support, because of this area, this region for football and how good it is, we've been able to, to really hit the ground running, and that's what's led to our, our successful start. Well, Coach, the other advantage you have is that Old Dominion is a stellar academic institution. So the typical player that's going to come to Old Dominion has an IQ. They may not have the speed at times. They may not have the power. But long as they have that IQ backing them, they can definitely make things happen on the field. And it looks like you've got the athleticism <laughs> in what you've done. Um, who are those guys now that have come along within your program that have embraced your message and have carried it forward to the underclassmen? Well, you make a great point when you talk about the school's reputation. I mean, what really intrigued me when I took this job was the fact, number one, all the teams here, all the athletic teams, all 18 of them went. We won the uh, the Virginia State Award the last two years for having the highest winning percentage in state. And you're talking about Virginia, Virginia Tech, all the other schools. So that there's a mindset here of winning. There's also a mindset here of good academics in the athletic department. We have a 91% graduation rate. So you combine kids who think they're supposed to win all the time in athletics. That message gets around to all the kids because they all talk. And then you talk about the graduation rate. When you're recruiting and you're bringing kids on campus, you've got parents, you're saying, look, not only is your son going to be successful, this school wins at everything, but he's going to graduate. There's a proven track record of graduation. And when we sent our message to the kids, the recruits, the first couple classes, we said, look, you're going to be part of something special. You are going to have a chance to build your legacy here at Old Dominion. People will remember you forever as being the first at this school. And that enabled us to go get those recruits. 67% of our team, Bo, are Virginia high school student athletes. Now, based on a trip I took to visit uh, Coastal Carolina and South Florida, I went down and saw those two head coaches when I first got hired. And I asked them, 
I took about 20 pages of notes. Tell me everything you did right and tell me everything you did wrong or you wish you could have done better. And both Jim Levitt at South Florida and Dave Bennett at Coastal helped me from one very key standpoint both. They said if they could have done it over, they would have taken more junior college players and transfers early on so they could redshirt their freshmen their first year of playing. And that's what we've been able to do here in 2009. We've been able to redshirt a lot of these freshmen because we brought in quality junior college players and quality transfers. You know, that, that is the, I think that's the biggest key is that you can, we see this on the NFL all the time when we break down football. You've got a young guy coming in that played college football and was significantly successful. When you step up to a caliber and you throw them in there, you're talking about men that have been pounding it out for years. In high school, it's no different. Especially, it's more difficult in high school. You've got a freshman guy who really played against very limited competition. Despite what they may think, they haven't really played against anybody, and they're good. When you throw them into the, the, the hornet's nest of college, every college team is full of good to great players. It's not like high school where you have poor players with great players. You've got all good and all great athletes. So having that chance to redshirt the, the player and see the speed factor and have them to adjust to college life is, I think, a huge positive step in the right direction. You get more face time and more play calling with these guys. Absolutely, Bo. And the biggest point you make right there, which is, is relevant to our fact that bringing these kids in now and being able to separate the classes. You know, technically, if we had just recruited high school, we'd have redshirt freshmen and true freshmen right now we'd be playing with. And because they'd all be playing in 2009, they would all graduate together in 2013. And we'd have 40 to 50 kids walk out the door. We'd be starting all over again the next year. By adding a third class, which was the junior college transfer class, we have 17 kids right now, Bo, that are technically juniors. So we've got three classes in. We're playing all those juniors. We're redshirting the freshmen. And what you see is, particularly for us in our first three games, we're playing teams that have 22, 23-year-old seniors. And if we had put all out 18 and 19-year-olds, we'd have done a disservice to those kids and would not have had the chance to be as successful as we have in these first three games. Coach, now let's talk about Jacksonville. Definite heroics. The I, I'm guessing that you've got everybody clicking on. You've got media people showing up trying to find out what's going on at Old Dominion. You know, from your standpoint in your office, first you've got to be sweating because you've got another game coming up. But inside of you, has got to be very proud of what you all put together in that big, big comeback. Very much so, Bo. When we started this season, you know, a lot of folks wanted to know, what do you think your record's going to be? And I said, I can't tell you because we haven't even scrimmaged anybody. We haven't played another team. But what we want to see each week is improvement, and we're seeing that. And the biggest thing that happened for us in Jacksonville, Bo, other than getting the win, was that that was the first time we faced adversity. It's the first time we've been behind in a game. We were behind 13 to nothing after the first quarter, 20 to 7 at the half, and 27 to 14 in the fourth quarter. Top of that, the heat index was 113 degrees down there. We're playing on the road. We don't have 20,000 people backing us. All those adverse conditions we faced, we grew from that as a team. And the people keep asking me, well, how did your guys handle it? And I said, it's simple. We practice those situations all the time. We do a drill bow every day in practice we call sudden change, where the kids might be down doing individual work. I'm going to blow the whistle, and we're going to create a situation. And we do four-minute defense, which means our defense has to turn the ball back over to the offense with two minutes to go and all our timeouts. Our defense did that against Jacksonville. Jacksonville started a drive with five minutes to go. We got the ball back with two minutes to go and all our timeouts. So we were able to go 91 yards and drive the field and score a touchdown. And actually, Bo, we left too much time. We left them 45 seconds. <laughs> they were comfortable. They were comfortable in that situation because we practice it all the time. Our coaches had them prepared. There was no panic. Everybody was poised. Everybody knew their role. And those are the things that I want to see improvement on every single week is when we face adversity, we practice it, you know what you got to do, now we just go out and we execute. Coach, I want to say thank you for showing up being so tough. We're going to ask permission if we can contact you probably in the next several weeks to keep track of you as you get further, deeper into the season. Would that be okay? Absolutely, Bo. It would be my pleasure, and uh, we're just going to keep trying to get better here at Old Dominion. But right now the excitement level around here is great. And uh, we're very appreciative of our fans. we got this group we call the 12th Monarch, and that's our fan base, and they have been phenomenal. Our first two home games, Bo, we accredited uh, 15 penalties 
to our fans on the opposition because of how loud and proud they've been. And <laughs> when you got that type of support, you can build a successful program. Absolutely. Coach Bobby Wilder of Old Dominion Football, he has got a Phoenix going on there, and you saw the first step into national championships. I know they're not talking about it yet, but we are here because we're allowed to. Coach, thank you. I appreciate it, Paul. Thanks for having me. We're absolutely. We're off the air one more.